I'm Dan Hunt, and this is Up Close and Personal. My guest right now, Davin Michaels. Now, Davin, you and I have known each other for 20 some odd years. Long time. We go back and forth all yeah. over the place. Um, your company is 123 Employee. That's right. Okay. We are here at World CryptoCon at the Aria Hotel. What an incredible event. I love it. Some of the brightest people on the planet. It's great to just be hanging out. Is, is, isn't it? I mean, it is. and, and this is the first time they've done this event, and the attendance is incredible, yeah. the speakers are incredible. Yeah. So, you know, before we talk about what you're doing now, let's get back into who you are and where you came from. Okay. So where, where were you born? Where did you grow up? I actually grew, grew up in California. I'm a California boy and, uh, and spent a lot of my life in California. Really? And, yeah, until I started traveling the world. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I want you to talk to me a little bit about uh, What I want you to do is just close your eyes for a minute. It's a long, long time ago, okay? Yeah. Go back to 12th grade in high school. Yeah. Okay, what did you want to be? What did you want to be when you grew up in 12th grade in high school? Well, it's interesting. For me, there was actually no 12th grade. So I actually graduated high school in the 10th grade. Uh, okay. I went to school for two years and I graduated early. Not because I was particularly bright, it's because I hated it. I, I just felt uh, stifled in high school. And so at that age, I'd already started my business. And so I, I started my business when I was 15. And I got very lucky. After I got out of high school, I went to a local community college. And at that college, there was a one-year immersion program in entrepreneurship. Today, there's there, there's a million programs in entrepreneurship. Back then, there were none. Right. And it was taught by two maverick entrepreneurs who made tons of money in the 50s and 60s. As a matter of fact, they were the first people to ever put an offer on the on a box of cereal. And oh. Yeah, and they, they, they really took me under their wing at a young age. And most of what I learned in entrepreneurship, I learned on the job. But they taught me at a young age that it was possible. And so I wanted to be an entrepreneur. One of the things that's a recurring theme as I interview CEOs and owners of companies and, and hedge fund managers yeah. is they all had somebody in high school or college that kind of took them under their wing and and pushed them down the road sure, sure. of, you know, almost like think and grow rich. Yes. It's like it's like learning from above. It's a shortcut. It, it, it is a Mentorship shortcut. Mentorship is a shortcut. So l let me talk about that for one second. Yeah. Do you think you'd be where you are today if those guys weren't there? Not a chance. So uh, I've had many mentors over the years, but my two most important mentors, one was my dad. Uh, my dad was not a scholar. He was not a wealthy man. He was the type of guy that got up every morning, planted his feet on the ground, and was just grateful to be alive. He lived in a state of gratitude before it was in vogue. Yes. And so that was huge for me. And the second was my uncle Mo. He was the smartest man I ever knew. He was the son of a junkyard dealer, one of 10 kids. Uh, so he grew up incredibly poor, but he grew up to become a prolific Beverly Hills doctor. And what would happen is, on the holidays, you know, I grew up kind of lower middle class, we didn't have a lot. Okay. What, but on the holidays, we would go to my Uncle Mo's house, and I'd see all the beautiful cars, beautiful homes, money, and then I'd go back to my life. And then on the holidays, we'd go back in, again to my Uncle Mo's life, and then back to my life. And at a very young age, I got hungry. I wanted that. I wanted what I envisioned right. as success, and it made me hungry at a very young age. And you know, probably it's certain, some, somewhat, maybe to a detriment sometimes, not being exactly happy with what I had. Right. But still, I think that's what drives a lot of people to to want more. Right? Exactly. And I got hungry at a very young age. And once again, my uncle Mo was the first person that said to me one day, he said. I think you need to start a business. And at the time, I was 15, I was working in retail, I thought my entire life was going to be retail, and one day he said, you need to start a company. And I did, and that moment in time changed my entire life. What, what was that first company? <laughs> it was a nothing little company. So he, he sat me down one day, he said, listen, he said, there are wealthy uh, doctors, lawyers in Beverly Hills, they have a lot of money, they don't have a lot of time. He said, you need to go out and go shopping for them, match their clothes, number them, and they'll pay you to do this. And, and this I, was back in I, the I was, 70s, I was, 80s? Uh, 80s. I in the 80s? 80s. I was 15 years old. And, uh, and I, I, my, my Uncle Mo was the wisest man I ever knew, so I did anything he said without questions. So right. I, I started my business, and then from there I ended up starting a clothing company. And again, I had no idea what I was doing, but I was designing clothing for music groups in the early 80s. They had nothing going on, but an amazing thing happened just a short while after I opened for business. MTV came on the air, changed right. the face of music, changed my life. Uh, all of a sudden, I found myself working with the biggest bands in the 80s and 90s, and it was an incredible time, and we rode that wave, and that was the beginning. 
and and it was really in fashion and dressing them. It was originally. That originally, was my original. My but first. But as you moved on, you yeah. have done so many I things. I have done a lot You've, of things. Uh, yeah. You, you, you. I, I, yeah, I, I was in the entertainment business. I, I uh, was uh, uh, the biggest electronic music event producer in the U.S. I was very successful music and television producer for 15 years, and today I have about 550 employees in my company. You know. One of the questions that you know people send in to me all the time because I've interviewed a lot of people in the entertainment industry, yeah. and and they always ask, what does a producer do? So mm. I get two big I get questions. I question a lot. What's a grip and what's a producer? Yeah, <laughs> okay? those yeah. are the two big I questions. I get those questions I get. a lot. Yeah. So let's talk about yeah. uh, what a producer does. Sure. So a uh, producer can, can wear many hats, but in the music biz. What I did as a producer is I was responsible for the finished product. And not only was I responsible for it, but I was responsible for bringing it in on budget, bringing it on time. So what that looked like is if I was working with a band, normally what I'd like to do is I wanted to write their music, I would write their lyrics, I would work with the uh, engineer to mix it, and then I, I would complete the project. Right. Now sometimes I work with a lot of hip hoppers, a lot of rappers, those guys did their, they wrote their own rap. So then I would just write the music and produce. And sometimes I would work with somebody that was in, you know, infinitely uh, uh, successful, and and, uh, and and they did an amazing job, and so they didn't need me to write anything. So then, at that point, I would just kind of mold them and create the finished product. So, so I'm going to go back again to your childhood. Okay. Uh, it, you didn't finish high. Well, you finished high school, but yes. you just finished early. I, I finished so you early, tested and, out. and I never finished college. And you never finished One college. Year. One year. Where did the music background come from to all of a sudden start writing music? You That's know, you know, it's a it's a very good question that I don't exactly even have the answer to. Um, I picked up. Like I sat down at a piano and, and was pretty much able to play, and that's how I got started. I never had formal training. I was adopted. My biological parents were music students at NYU. Wow! I never met them. So you think it's in your genes? I I guess it's in my genes. Yeah. yeah. In today's market, you know, we're, we're we're sitting here and behind the camera, David Longoria, a friend of both of ours, a very you know popular, famous uh, musician and yeah. producer. Um, What's it take to be a really good producer in today's market? Because the industry really changed in Absolutely. our lifetime. Absolutely. You know, what it was when we started well, that, and what it is today are two different that's things. That's kind of what got me out of the business. Uh, so I think there's two things. Uh, if you are incredible, I mean, if you're incredibly gifted, incredibly talented, you will pierce through anything, right? You'll, right. It, it, as long as you are tenacious, you can make it happen. But secondly, it's really having a business mind. Right. So for me, I was, I think I was talented. Was I infinitely talented, incredibly talented? No, I don't think so. But I had a great business mind. And so I always approach it like a business. And so many artists are not business people, right? So if you can play both sides of the brain, exactly. it certainly is a huge asset. You know, my agent, and, and she is just an incredible, incredible woman, but she always would preach to me, this is show business. business. Show business business yeah. and you got to treat it like a business. You if you don't to. treat it like a business and get up every day yeah. and work at that business, yeah. you're not going to be successful. And it's a tough business. So if you don't treat it like a business, somebody's just going to destroy you. That's and, it. And they're not going to treat they you like a business. They don't play games. Yeah. Now, I saw you do a presentation and I, I know you fly around the world I doing did. this presentation yep. right now yep. for one, two, three employees. Yeah. And and basically, one, two, three employees is employee, employee, singular. just yep, a single. Yep, yep, uh, my, yep, my, yep. my cheat sheet yep, over there yep. says oh, S. Okay. Yep. So okay. one, two, three employee yes. is basically the best virtual assistant that I could personally ever have. I love that. It that, does that everything good. for me. I appreciate um, that. You, you know, you and I did a demonstration one day where yeah. you actually showed me My what this alive. person and, and yeah. they they used your assistant yeah. and walked right through the whole process. Yeah. How great was that? So Super let's fun. talk about what one, two, and three employee does yeah. um, for the average person, the entrepreneur, the yep. business person, yep. even the stay-at-home mom that's trying to start that home business. Totally. Let, let's talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we are celebrating our 10th year at 123 Employee. And when we started the company a decade ago, our focus was working with small businesses. And we do everything, all the busy stuff in their business, DS, busy stuff, uh, and everything, internet marketing, social media, telemarketing, back office tasks, inbound, outbound voice, customer service, the list goes on and on. And we do that for small businesses. Now, over the last decade, we have certainly uh, grown into other things as well. Now we work with SMBs, so we also work with larger companies right. doing their customer service. 
but we love doing it. Uh, we were one of the first to market, and uh, we have a lot of just really happy clients at One Two Three and a huge fan base. People love One Two Three because of the culture that we've really created globally. Let's let's just talk again a little bit about now. You have this the, your, your virtual assistants, mind you, yeah. are are set up where in the Philippines. We have three centers, three yeah. campuses, three campuses yeah. in the Philippines, yeah. and. Something that is a little different with yours that one of the companies I had worked with before is you actually assign me a person. Yeah, you actually have a, a dedicated assistant, assistant. That, that becomes an expert over time in your business. And they and they do things like make posts for you. Yeah, they, they handle your travel, whatever you need. I mean, there's very little that we that we don't do today at One Two Three Employee from content creation, online customer service. The list just goes on and on. The question that I think you get all the time then is, isn't that really expensive? No, we're really cheap, and that's because we're in the Philippines. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you can have a full-time employee for a little over a thousand bucks a month. A little over a thousand dollars a month, yeah. and they can okay. handle all your social media, whatever you need. And guys, I got to tell you, I know it works. Yeah. I've seen it work. Yeah. I've watched. I I get messages from your assistant Absolutely. when you and I are texting each yeah. other. Yeah. I'll, I'll even say. Wait a minute. Is this really you? <laughs> I get not. that all the time and I have to answer back, actually it is me. Actually it is me. But, but what happens is they queue up a lot of my messages. So for example, we have thousands of marketing partners all over the globe and quite often I need to reach out to those people. So my assistants, they reach out and then when they answer back, they say, is this really you? At that point they hand it over to me and I say, yes, it is me. But yes, I didn't initially reach out. So, right. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what's next? What's what on the horizon? That? You know, you always have something going on. Absolutely. You live half the time here in Vegas. And half the you time live in half Puerto the time Rico. in Puerto Rico. Yeah. So, uh, talk, what, what's next? What's Where next? are you going? Well, uh, tonight I'm heading to Australia. I'll be on a one month speaking tour through Australia, and then uh, I'll be in Bali, and then I'll be back in Puerto Rico. But what's next for us? Uh, the company's doing great. We are releasing a new blockchain project. It'll actually be live in a couple weeks, and as as passionate I am about my company, I'm also equally as passionate about crypto. And as you know, we've had a pretty incredible run yes. in this space. And uh, so yeah, our new blockchain goes live in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we won't ICO until next year, but we'll, we have an MVP. And so we will actually start testing and getting case studies over the next few weeks. Now, is there a website that people can go or do it, they just have to follow you to get it, a whole lot of It is not live yet, but I can tell you we'll be live shortly and it's serve.io, C-E-R-V.io. C-E-R-V.io, and we're gonna wanna put that again in yeah. the link right below, right there. So. Yeah. Um, that, that is absolutely wonderful. I'm gonna ask yeah. you one more question. Yes. You're driven. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you've done a lot of things in your life. I have. Tell me your why. Why, what's why? the driving force behind what you do? You know, there's probably a couple things. Um, first of all, you know, I speak on stages all over the globe. It's one of the funnest things I do. And once in a while, somebody comes up to me and they say, you changed my life. Or, you know, I was I was broke and I you showed me how to start my own business and today we, you know, we're making money, and, and right, uh, and I'm a junkie for that. I'm, I'm kind of a junkie for personal growth, and so that really drives me. Um, and then also, um, I need a lot of stimulation. Okay, so I can't just be sitting around. Right. Now it's interesting. I've told my girlfriend that over the next few years I'm gonna slow down a little bit, kind of semi-retire. But I, I wonder what that's really gonna <laughs> yeah. look like. What? It's it's weird because you know I've been self-employed since I was 15. So for over three decades I've been like going, 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 and I would like to know who I am when I'm not busy, because I don't really know. Because you don't know who that person is I don't is know anymore. who that person is, so I want to find out, but at the same time, I'm just driven. I, I, I love to be in new places, I love to meet people, I love to interact, I like to be doing and creating, so it's just kind of in my DNA. You know, personal growth and, and that feedback, helping others, yeah. is so important. You and I were actually, um, actually you, myself, and my wife were actually speaking on a stage in London, I think it yep. was, a couple years ago, yeah. and, and Patty and I walked off stage and a woman walked up to Patty and said, thank you so much, you've changed my life. Yeah. And you, the same words that yeah. you just used, and Absolutely. we didn't talk about that. Yeah. And I gotta tell you, the feeling inside is just so fulfilling. It's, it it, it's it just keeps you though. going. You know, I'll tell you something. I, I've, as you know, I've written a lot of books. Um, I'm about, I've written about five books that haven't been released yet. And one is a parable, and it's called The Guru Master. And it explores the expert, it explores the relationship between mentor and mentee. 
And when most people think about their relationship, they they think that oh, you know, the mentee gets all of all of the great stuff from it. But I believe the mentor gets just as much, if not more. Right. Right. It's the most fulfilling, empowering thing ever. It, it, that that right. empowerment is. It's just what, it, it's the drive behind me. It's the drive behind our course, Law of Attraction. And you, you know, get, we have that get, course that... You get hooked on it. it you do. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, it's like an endorsement. It's a drug. It's a drug. It, it, it is. Yeah. So, Davin, thank you so much for My being pleasure, here. You know, it's, it's always a pleasure to see you. It's hard to catch up with you. I know. It's hard to catch up with you. I know. I know. Grab it. <laughs> but, you I know, I saw it. you walking by. I pulled you into the booth. We yeah. got the, the time together. So, I appreciate it. From Las Vegas, Nevada, at the Aria Hotel, Casino, Resort, and Spa at World CryptoCon. I'm Dan Hunt with Davin Michaels saying have a great rest of today and an even better day tomorrow.